start with what we ended last week. Okay, homeostasis. So short recap was asked by our friend, right? So very simple. Homeostasis is negative feedback or positive feedback response in our body, right? Because you have a difference in your body, okay? And your body is a system where it automatically regulates, all right? So these are a few of the things that it regulates, okay? And majorly, we will be studying about urine, um, blood osmotic pressure. Sebelum ni, hormones kita belajar pasal banyak hormon discharge, uh, how much is it going to stop, you know, stuff like that. And we'll be learning about blood sugar level, body temperature, I explained to you guys, and how it changes during a period of time. Example for men or people with thyroxin issues, all right? Or for female in general, we can see it very common when it comes to their menstruation cycle, when they are attaining age, when they are going through puberty, right? Men also same. So your hormone does a lot of um, secondary changes in your body, right? Your deep voice, your height, you are more, you have broader shoulders, right? A more muscular look for men, for female, you have a more, you also have a deeper voice, yes. You have an hourglass body structure. So this is all for you, young girl, a young boy, a woman, right? So during this complicated process, what happens is hormonal changes happen in your body in a massive rate without you even understanding, without you even observing or controlling by your support or in your condition. That you tak mengarahkan badan you untuk, okay, I want more testosterone to be formed in my body so that my pubic part is going to grow longer. You're not going to do that, right? You're not going to do something where I want my testosterone, testosterone, testosterone to grow more, right, to have more, so that I'm going to have facial hair. It doesn't work that way, right? So it works based on the three things I always tell you guys, genetics, environment, and most importantly, your food consumption, right? So good food you consume. Okay, QQ. Dalam Malay, ya. Okay, maksud saya, apabila perubahan dalam badan kita berlaku, disebabkan hormonal changes, okay, apa akan berlaku dalam badan kita? Your body is going to be secreting multiple hormones dalam rate atau ratio yang tidak tertentu. Apa akan menjadi is um, there will be moments akan ada keadaan di mana badan kita akan mengeluarkan hormon yang sangat banyak untuk suatu aspek sahaja dan lagi satu hormon yang kurang untuk another aspect, right? So apa akan menjadi in your body is there will be difference. Sekarang hormon ratio dah lain dah. Lepas tu your body reactions are going to change as well. Now, when something is changing in your body, your reactions is changing, your body will trigger your mind like, hey, this is not right. This is not the optimum condition. This is not how your body is supposed to be, right? Apabila that signal is given, like I've taught you guys before, the neuron functions, okay, how electrical impulses is passed on, right? All of that is going to play an important part in your homeostasis parts, right? Okay, so... So that's the key, key part here, okay? I showed you guys about the negative feedback and why the negative feedback happens about dia nak membetulkan keadaan kepada optimum condition if something runs out, okay? Positive feedback is when there is a change, all right? Okay, apabila ada perubahan, our body increases towards that perubahan. Response to fluctuation in the opposite. That is going to be a man badan kita. Contohnya, glucose akan transfer kepada glucagon, okay, kepada glycogen, by glucagon, right, in the insulin, uh, by insulin, okay, hormone injected, okay. All of this that I will taught you guys, okay, will be happening to reduce back the sugar content level in your body, right. Now, benda yang sama in a different way akan berlaku apabila you nak carry out a flight or fight situation, okay. So this is your norm. Right, normal condition, 
excess heat in your body akan ada corrective mechanism ataupun deficiency um, kurang panas in your body right corrective mechanism kalau terlebih banyak sangat haba di dalam badan badan kita akan mula uh, mengeluarkan peluh meaning you are releasing out water content from your body so this water content on your body is going to cool down your body so water can high heat specific heat capacity right so it's going to cool down your body and why do we need a cool body temperature so that right our enzymes internal right even on our skins all right everything is going to work at the optimum condition right so we will be sweating if too hot if our body is too hot that is why when you have a fever we want to correct it we want to take a medicine padahal the fever is there because your body is fighting something see this is when things get complicated nampak tak kalau badan kita panas kita perlu tapi badan kita perlu jadi panas untuk membunuh virus atau bakteria di dalam badan apabila situasi yang complicated macam ni where badan kita perlu menjadi panas tapi at the same time kalau panas you perlu juga right now you're having a system which is not normal This is when medication kicks in. Kalau the things go to an extreme. Tapi, if it's not extreme, your body must heat up to a level where it can is able to trigger your immune system and also uh, deactivate the microbes or bacteria or virus dalam badan kita. Okay, lepas tu, go back to the normal condition. See, the condition of going back itu adalah corrective mechanism. Macam mana you go back dengan mengeluarkan pelu. Okay, kalau badan kita kurang hub, your surrounding is very very cold. Right now if you're just naked, right? So it's from bears and gorilla. Naturally is um, surrounding kita sangat seju to our body. Dar dari orang pun, you hugging your mouth and be transmitted to how heat moves, right? So, Apabila surrounding kita sejuk sangat dan badan kita kurang uh, haba, okay, more heat is being lost to the environment, right? So what will happen is your body will automatically start to shiver, okay? Badan akan, you will be vibrating more, right? <laughs> so when you're vibrating, you're creating a motion ataupun pergerakan telah dihasilkan. Pergerakan ini akan menghasilkan apa? Haba, right? When you're creating heat in your body through active movement, okay, apa akan menjadi, your body akan kembali balik kepada your normal condition, kan? So, this is corrective mechanism, okay? In simple terms, lah, right? So, in our body, when it happens, it's way more complicated. So, till now, I think that is a good enough summary for negative feedback response. Okay, so is there any questions so far? Based on last week class, there's 28 people of you guys here. I hope everyone can hear me out clear. Okay, how about the rest? Okay, so these are some of the examples right? oxygen atau carbon dioxide, hormone level telari, okay, too, many, too much of thyroxine, too less of thyroxine, ataupun sexual hormones yang tidak in balance. Okay, apa akan jadi kalau contoh sexual hormones are not in balance? Contohnya, is when you have too much of estrogen or progesterone or you have an imbalance of testosterone, a man can sound like a female. A man might have female mood swings. Some female will have most mustache brewing under their nose like a man. Maybe they have too much of testosterone. Maybe, right? Or maybe they are generally genetically, they are hairy, okay? 
tapi waktu kecil tak banyak sangat rambut. As you grow older, you notice growth of hair in certain areas, pubic areas, or probably even in your face, in your hands, right? So these are due to sexual hormones act over there, right? So apabila banyak sangat sexual hormones, you might have different moods, different feelings, okay? And this is normal. And if that is in a rate where it's not normal, okay, where it's affecting your other system, badan kita akan mengadakan negative feedback control. Okay, a corrective mechanism will take place untuk balancekan balik. Sama dengan metabolic level, glucose, water balance pun sama. You're going to lose your water content or you're going to, your body is going to create uh, symptoms in your body di mana you rasa dahaga nak minum banyak lagi air. Regulation of pH pun sama. Okay, you can rasa masam or your mouth will feel acidic sometimes, right? Meaning you need to eat something like vegetables or fruits or something alkali content, right? And body temperature. Body temperature is just what I told you guys a few moments ago. Okay, a lot of people are here. All right. So with that stated, now let's go to today's lesson. All right, so I told you guys about um, positive feedback done, right? About platelets and childbirth, I told you guys already. And until when it happens, all right? And there's a short experience experiment but I think we'll be skipping that. Okay, but you'll probably learn that in school. Now, sekarang kita dah belajar homeostasis secara general. Apakah maksud dia, apakah contoh dia in that general itself, probably you guys don't understand good enough. Now we are going to go in detail so we can quickly finish and go to the next subtopic. Chapter 3 is very big. I want to know, know um, do you guys dah habis ke homeostasis dekat sekolah? Siapa yang dah habis? I would like a raise of hands or yes sir, something in the comment section. And feel free to ask me any questions. You only learn when you ask questions and do latihan. So, belum, belum. Meaning you guys haven't learned at school yet. Okay. Da, so we have one person have done. Now, do we have more? Da, da, belum. Okay, belum, belum. Harina, da. Okay, so I hope I'm providing more value than your school teachers teaching you. Okay, so now formation of urine. Now, everyone needs to urinate. It's not a taboo topic. It is something that we need to learn and we need to understand so that we don't have any issues in the future, right? So I used to be taught by a teacher that stating that the size of a kidney is basically your face bum, your face, you know, the, when you close your five fingers, yeah, it's size of that. And that determines your size of a kidney. But as I grow older, I really doubt what she says because it's uh, logic, right? But probably some people need what, what is urine and why something that um, Kidney is always related to urine. If you tahan rasa nak kencing tu lama sangat, you akan rasa somewhere pain in these locations where your kidney is there. Okay? And when, if you watch fightings, um, mixed martial art artists, pegaduhan macam UFC semua, when there's hit to the kidneys, people have kidney failures, or kidney issues, and that results in your regulations of water salts in the body ataupun your frequency to urine you know could be hurt your kidneys will hurt when you urinate okay so these are some issues and these are also some issues why you should not consume excessive alcohol intake and must be very aware of what sort of drugs you're consuming not saying all drugs are bad okay if that's the case you cannot consume any drugs you're doctor is giving in, in the hospitals. Ginjal boleh membesar ya, sir, sebab bila kita besarkan, first jadi besar juga. Yes, every single part of your body is growing. Ginjal boleh juga besar. But it's I, the, it's so small, yeah, it's function is so large. Can. So, same like our brain lah. Basically, every part of your body is very important. And the funny part about kidney, right, 
it's about memang we always think um brain and heart is the key to our body right macam oh brain dead ggwp heart dead you die but if your kidney gg meaning um gone case okay what will happen is kalau kidney kita bermasalah when you're young you can carry out dilation ataupun um cleansing of your blood okay through medical apparatus as you age there's nothing can be done even like heart and brain there is multiple studies being done and there is multiple um methods that can be used to um tapi mahal lah it's very expensive and it's very complicated tapi it's possible especially heart and brain kidney it's this kidney transplant that is kidney donation tapi if it's gone means it's gone like it's not something you can cure or give medication ke apa so that's why it's really important after a certain age old age people there comes to a time where nothing can be done so kidney plays an important role as well especially when your aging factor kicks in so kenapa kidney rosak tak boleh dibaiki dan perlu diganti dengan mesin okay that's how it is because it's very complex and it's very specific that is two reasons and lagi satu is it cannot be dibaiki dengan ubatan because it ages and it get rosak because that's how kidney is um dia punya internal um create that's how god created it lah okay but definitely why we say it is because dia punya cell differentiation structure dia macam tu yes no kidney will die it's basically a filter yes it's a filter let's say you have a, um a filter in your house up until a certain time okay even you clean your filter there will be a certain time where it's done you know it's done but the machine still can be function right so that's how it is there is many methods to clean your your filter your your kidneys okay first of all drink a lot of water right masa kecil kita dengar minum banyak sangat air nanti you tua-tua jangan minum banyak sangat air your doctor will say that because your kidney is failing all right so that is what happens as you age and there's nothing much can be done okay so now let's talk about urine production right regulations of water and salts in the body okay i have i have told you guys last week as well as much as water is important in your body natural salts are also important in your body okay because we need the ions such as sodium ions or chlorine ions in our body to carry out certain metabolic activity maksud saya uh, beberapa proses dalam badan kita memerlukan ions seperti um, like you guys study in chemistry right your cations and anions which we dapat daripada pengambil dan zat uh, um, iron or vitamins okay nutrients okay we get it from eating meats vegetables fruits or any other complex structures this has natural salts or natural ions in it and that's why we consume salt as well okay and it's important in our body to carry out certain metabolic reaction kan sekarang badan kita perlukan air dan uh, garam juga di dalam badan and the process of balancing dua benda ni okay kita nak ada the, the exact amount of the, the required needed amount of water dengan salt in your body so osmoregulation pernah dengar tak tahu tak apa maksud dia how does it work this is something you would probably learn in oh my god tak okay how about the rest Yes, the serious question. Okay, so imbang kan dengan mineral dengan air, yes. Maksudnya kalau banyak sangat mineral, um, there will be symptoms for you to drink more water. So, you need to drink more water. Okay, basically it's hypo dengan hyper. Guys, remember those terms? ADH plays an important role. Very good, Shamil. You remember that? Okay, tak apa. Many people might not um, understand the concept very well. Okay, let's just talk about urine first. So basically, yes, hypo is wet sponge. <laughs> okay, so urine production is to regulate the amount of water and salt content. Senang je, if badan kita banyak sangat air, your urine is going to be very clear. Okay, you're going to uh, release a lot of water from your body. If your body is lacking of water, your urine is going to be very thick. It's going to be so much of urea content and all the yellow 
thing that you see as your urine is all going to be the negative waste from your body, right? So this is the balance of water and salt in your body through osmoregulation. Urine process is osmoregulation, okay? So get rid of body um, waste, excretion, okay? Maintaining blood pH, yes, blood has pH, okay? It's not in a massive um, number, but why do urine has chitons above? When you excrete, you're releasing out urea. Okay, urea generally is acidic, right? So re regulating blood volume and pressure. Yes, your blood has a volume. Yes, your blood has pressure. Why does the blood has pressure? What is the formula for pressure, guys? Ingat tak physics? It's over there. What's the formula of pressure? P equals to? Okay. Ah, oh, crap. Huh? Anyone? Pressure punya formula apa? F equals to MA. Isn't that false? Pressure tadi formula sendiri ke? Okay, yes. I is right. P equals to FOA, right? So, betul. Betul tak kan? So, now, you have... You have, yes, good guys. Okay, so, so you guys have force and you guys have area as well. So when there's force, there is pressure involved as well. So you have force in your body, right? That's why you are living. This is not some spiritual force, I check out. Your heart is pumping. Okay, that's going to create pressure. It's going to, your blood is moving in a high velocity in your body as we speak, right? Pressure created from your body um, as we breathe. And all it's all a huge uh, connection of things in your body there is chemistry physics biology working together at the same time okay so that is why uh, regulating blood and volume why our urine is important as well so human urinary system involves the kidney and this is how the kidney looks the moment your nerves in the kidneys and the muscles are dying or old gg you die so organs of the urinary system kidneys ureters bladder urethra and probably you guys would draw this in school. I think it's best for you to screenshot and um, know the important organs as well. So you have an artery and a vein. Artery is going to carry your, come on guys, anyone. Is it going to be the oxygenated blood or the deoxygenated blood? Manisato carry up artery and vein. I didn't teach you guys personally this, so I don't know how much is your understanding. Oxygen. So artery is going to carry your oxygen. Good. How about your veins? Your veins are going to carry your deoxygenated. Good, Fatin. So, is there going to be a moment where it's going to switch? Is there going to be a moment where it's going to be switching? The man artery mumbawa deoxygenated blood, then veins mumbawa. Yes, and where is that? The man uh, apakah nama dia? Guys, I have 31 people here. I need your full support. Tahu jawab, tahu cakap, tahu. From kidney to heart, okay, interesting. When I kawa, okay, how about the rest? Tak tahu, sir. Okay, it's okay, tak tahu. Okay, never mind. All right, never mind. That is, that means your, your, Chapter one is a problem. Okay, it means that you guys need to revision that. Maybe if we have extra time, I will teach you guys that as well. So it's okay if I bring this now, you guys will be more confused. Tapa. Take baby steps. Okay. So now urinary system. So all and BM. So okay, I can make so all and BM at the okay. So organs of the urinary system are like kidney, uh ureter, um bladder, then again, urethra, right? So, this is how it looks. The pundi kencing and um, kidney, kinjal. Okay, artery pulmonary dengan vena pulmonary. Akhirnya, ada seorang ingat. Bagus. Okay, so urinary system. Okay, kita ada, this is how your urinary system have. Kita ada 13 jenis urinary, uh, sorry, systems in our body. Okay, one of the system is urinary system. Kita ada respiratory system. Apa lagi system kita ada? So much of systems we have, kan? So, urinary system constitutes of four major um, 
organelles or organs? It's organs. So kidneys produce urine, right? Ureters transport the urine. Urinary, urinary bladder store your urine. That's why you store your urine before you are uh, urinating. Urethra passes the urine to outside. Okay, so kita the renal artery, renal vein aorta, and inferior vena cava. Okay, we will take this again, baby steps. Okay, so you guys must be able to label this as well. Just the same picture. Now, kidney. This is how your kidney looks. It looks like a peanut, kacang, maybe. Okay, so this is how your kidney looks, and the job of the kidney is red bean. Yes, exactly. Sorry. Okay, so the job of the kidney is to clean the blood by removing metabolic waste. Okay, maksudnya kidney kita akan membersihkan darah kita dengan mengeluarkan bahan-bahan um, yang tidak diperlukan oleh badan kita. Okay, your metabolic waste. Metabolic waste tu apa? Contohnya, your carbon dioxide, what else are metabolic waste? Okay, stuff that your body doesn't want needed after a reaction. Okay, excess water, urea, okay, salt maybe, right? So excess solutes, example, salts and glucose, okay? Yes, sugar does goes out in your urine. I told you guys, right? If you want to check whether you have um, diabetes or not, you can actually urine and check it out. Yeah. So excess water, definitely. Excreting them as urine and maintain homeostasis and blood solid con concentration. So urine, urinating is homeostasis. Okay, kita, it's a corrective mechanism to balance your blood solid concentration. Excess solutes are personal. Okay. Excess solutes, what is solute first of all? We have solution, we have solvent, we have solute. Okay, solvent, the natural solvent is water, right? Okay, so that is solvent, water. Solutes is salt or glucose. Okay, it's a chemical. Now, these two makes solution, right? So, Garam is solute, solvent adalah air. Dodo akan menghasilkan air garam. Air garam itu adalah solution. So solute is excess of salt or chemicals such as glucose. Okay, hope that clears your question, Nukman Nafal. Okay, guys. The hardworking kidneys, right? The two kidneys in the body. Okay, first of all, we have two kidneys, yeah. Right, lebihan bahan larut, yes. Uh, tu kesoalan anda, Harina? Not sure. Okay, so the hardworking kidneys, the two kidneys in the body receive between 1,100 to 2,000 liters of water, right? So, satu hari, berapa banyak air yang kita perlu minum? Anyone? What is the advisable amount of water to be drank a day? Please don't tell me. Okay, good. I was expecting... Lapan glass air minum, cikgu. Okay. Oh, that is. All right. Maybe when you're a kid, eight glasses, I think it's time to double those glasses. Okay. So two liters is a standard. Um, three liters is good. It all depends on your body weight, on your BMI, and your diet. Okay, your water intake. Makin gemuk, memperbanyakkan minuman air kosong. Okay, kalau nak kurang badan. Right? Because by consuming water, you're gonna definitely you're gonna make your tummy feel, and definitely you are burning calories as well. So yes, you can drink as much as water as you want when you're a kid, but kita yang malas, and your kidney is gonna be very hardworking type because it's gonna filter all of it, and because the body has only about five to six liters of the blood, um, generally we call it six liters of blood. Okay, your blood runs through this kidney to be cleaned about once every four minutes. Imagine. We have 5.6 liters of blood that equals to around five Coke bottles, okay? And you are running it into the small red bean shape. Do just now, you saw just now. The red bean, okay? You are pushing and you are running your blood through those veins inside your kidneys, right? 
So constantly working, that's why it's as it's as hard working as your heart, right? So the position and structure of kidneys is over here. The left is slightly higher than your right, okay? And external structure. So this is how it looks, the size of it. Okay, tak adalah kecil sangat. The same time, bukan tak adalah bosa sangat. It's big as your school ruler probably around 18 to 19 centimeters, blood vessels and ureter enclosed by fatty tissues. So why fatty tissues, guys? Blood vessels is important, okay? And ureter, you know where is ureter? Okay, it's enclosed, meaning telah diseleduk ataupun ditutup dengan fatty tissue. Kenapa fatty tissue? By the way, this is the structure of a pig kidney, okay? It's a kidney of the pig to warm it up. Yes, to warm it up. But definitely you need to understand one more factor. Lemak punya primary uh, factor is, yes, to warm it up. But you have so much of lemak around your heart. To warm it up, lagi satu apa? The most important part of your fat. Look at a fat person. Where is the fat stored? Is it stored in his skull? Is it stored uh, in his legs? It's in the body region, right? And that is to for protection. Yes, exactly. Okay, you will see people having um, fat in the tummy region. Okay, to protect their kidneys, or you will see fat uh, accumulated in their chest region. Okay, to protect as well. But too much of fat is bad, right? So to give energy, yes, but. To give energy, your input must be equaling to your output. You makan biryani, you can work out or you can kerja as much as releasing the calories that you consume in the biryani, right? If not, you're going to be storing fats and that can lead to heart issues. So, yes, we all love biryanis, but know your limits. So, kidneys are surrounded by a fibrous capsule. Okay, so fibrous capsule to upper and adrenal gland, fibrous tissue, fat layer. So, we know what is so the kidney will do the same thing when we're sleeping table malaria yes exactly the kidney okay when you are sleeping your blood is still being um filtered but activity your kidney activity brain activity um even your breathing your heart your lungs activities these are going to be um much more slower because most of your time when you're sleeping most of the energy in your body is going to be focused on one place and where is the place guys Dekat sistem apa apabila kita tidur, kebanyakan tenaga akan tertumpu di situ untuk proses apa? Anyone? Shamel, can you give me the answer? Anyone else? Breathing, no. When you're sleeping, you are not breathing heavily. Perut, yes. For repair, very logical, very advanced. But yes, digestion. Betul, Harina, betul, David Muller. So, exactly. So, when you are sleeping, most of your energy is focused to your digestion, to digest your food that you're consuming. Therefore, at those times, other organelles, other organs, is not going to be actively working. So, probably the duration it takes for filtering the blood might be longer, right? So, stuff like that. Same goes to breathing. We have an average of how how much breaths we are, how, much, how many times your heart is pumping and all. But it's different between when you're running or jogging compared to when you're sleeping, right? So stuff like that. Now, we can look at the kidney's picture now, right? So this is how your kidney is surrounded by a fibrous capsule for protection and for efficiency as well. Okay. So this is your renal artery, your ureters. Okay. This is how it looks like. Sekarang, about kidney. If you notice in this chapter, kan, uh, coordination and response, kita akan belajar too many things in very short, so in one topic. So there's a lot. Please take notes. Please understand every single thing. Ask questions if you do not understand. All right? So kidney has two internal layers. Okay? Satu adalah renal cortex. And the outer... Uh, that's the outer light red region, okay? And renal medulla, okay? This is similar to your brain part as well when you learn cortex, medulla, open guitar, stuff like that, right? So, inner darker red brown region adalah renal medulla, the dalam part, okay? 
this is how it looks under an x-ray region look right so it's connected to a ureter so it's going to be filtered and it's going to be passing through so this is how it looks like when you cut through a human kidney okay you can see the cortex the outer layer and medulla the inner layer right so i think people who, who pernah makan lembu or um kambing or even ayam ikan i'm not so sure <laughs> you guys probably would have seen these kidneys when your mom is cleaning these animals right so sometimes next time your mom is cleaning the animals you can actually check it out how it looks for yourself and i've checked out how hard of an animal looks like and all you know so it's fun okay so now cortex medulla renal artery renal veins a friend just now told us renal artery and renal vein has a different way of bringing blood right so you're going to look at it more pelvis renal pyramid that's what we call it and ureter and the renal artery branches inside the kidney each capillary supplies blood to hundreds of thousands of tiny infiltration tubes called nephrons so the detail of nephrons okay that's how small it is and this is how important the um, kidney is about they are the capillary a capillary ni akan menyampaikan um, darah kepada hundreds of thousands of tiny filtration units kan so each unit is a can filter the blood is just going to be pumped okay it's just going to be shoot towards in right and it's going to be filtered in these regions you can check out um videos on youtube about how the filtration is done okay now let's look at the renal artery renal vein renal pelvis so this is how what your friend was trying to bring just now right so renal artery it supplies oxygenated blood and nutrients to kidney and renal vein carries away filtered blood to the body okay so this is pretty simple to what we understand our common understanding of arteries arteries do carry out oxygenated blood and veins or okay the renal veins it carries out filtered blood okay which has been meaning filtered blood meaning the kidney has done his actions on the blood and renal pelvis is when the urine is formed in the kidney okay drains into the renal pelvis right so the urine is formed inside the kidney with the waste products of the blood okay what are the waste products such as urea carbon dioxide or all the other unwanted things so nephron the most tiniest um filtrating unit in our kidney right so nephron is a functional unit of the kidney about a million in each kidney and consists three major parts this is where things get very complicated where you need to draw okay you need to draw yeah guys so please take a paper a pen or draw somewhere or oh, ambil gambar pun boleh so basically you have three major parts the glomerulus b is bowman's capsule c is renal tubule okay so how does the glomerulus look what is a tubule and definitely you have bowman capsule and loop of henley this is uh yes yeah, so the nephron is like the filter exactly so this is how you have to draw gambani sile lucis okay definitely must draw okay asal macam cakap dengan budak sekolah right so a simple guys blood from your renal artery is going to flow right okay so renal artery is going to carry out looks like an alveoli it mm, not exactly because it's going to be filtering here okay so it's going to carry your blood from your renal artery it's going to go to your bowman's capsule right where glomerul is glomerulus is set okay so the blood is going to be filtered through this right and then you have tubules okay which connects to the next side of the kidney okay so now you're going to have um the loop of henley okay we will see its function and the collecting duct of the um blood and definitely the blood to the renal vein because you're going to carry out the um filtered blood out so this is how it is now you're going to look at its functions so bowman's capsule okay 
I'm going to teach you guys gambar raja lepas tu part by part. Tapi when you guys draw, I want you guys to draw in a part where diagram ada at the same time every details is there. If I do that one big slide touch code, right? So that's why I need to do this way. So Bowman's capsule, as you guys see just now, okay, it has the glomerulus inside that. We have the efferent arterial then an efferent arterial. Okay, sekarang, I need to be very confused with efferent and efferent kat sini. Sebab dia simple je. Let's put it in a way where efferent is place where it masuk and efferent is where it keluar. Sama dengan neuron yang kita belajar. Efferent is when you are censoring, right? Sensor like you're receiving the changes from your environment. Macam panas, you uh, sudu yang panas terkena dekat bibir, you rasa panas, right? You keluarkan the sudu again or you accidentally drink hot soup, kan? What is your sensory in there? Okay, your sensory neuron is your efferent neuron, okay? That's the first thing yang kena. Sekarang, efferent is, no, efferent, AFF is sensory chamel, EFF is motor, okay? Yes, efferent is exit. Good. So, this is what you need to remember. Normal neurons, you need to understand. Efferent, um, pergi kepada interneuron, keluar dekat efferent neuron. Simple je, Shamal. Okay. That is the normal neuron concept. You can either relate to that or you can understand this as how it is right now. You can take uh, like how Nukman told, efferent is E, exit, or efferent is the entry point. Okay. So, normally, Motor neuron is when you are responding to. Sensory neuron is when you are feeling those things from the environment. Okay, so that is afferent, AFF. Okay, message akan disampaikan kepada interneuron. Lepas tu, decision making is done by? No guys, interneuron is motor neuron. Oh my god, nope, nope. I thought, okay, why not you guys go check back what I taught you guys on this subject on YouTube channel, all right? Because I don't know what you guys been learning in your school. Okay, That's what happens in school. It's all right. So let's just stick back here, all right? So basically, this is how Bowman's capsule is, okay? And Fatin, you can check back. Efferent is sensory. Okay, it's gonna, um, sen gonna, contohnya, okay guys. When someone is clicking on the doorbell, okay, doorbell, you dengar, bell is clicking, okay, ting, 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 dengar in your body vibrating, okay, your gelondang in your ears, your eardrums vibrating, right, a neuron is going to receive that, which neuron is it? Apakah nama neuron receiving this environmental factor? It's your sensory neuron, it's your efferent neuron, betul Kiki, okay. Sekarang, message ini akan uh, disampaikan kepada your central nervous system, right? Your braining, your your brainy. It's going to think for you. Nak pergi, tengok kat luar ada siapa ke tak? Ada orang tengah ringing the bell, right? So which neuron does that? Nope, it's not your efferent. It's your interneuron. Interneuron punya um, tugas adalah untuk membawa mesej daripada efferent, A-F-F-E-R-E-N-T kepada your central nervous system, your either middle or blanketa or your spinal cord. Okay, so what will happen there is interneuron, betul? Yes. Lepas tu, your brain, okay, your central nervous system dah ambil decision dah. Mak bapak saya dah balik rumah, saya kena pergi buka pintu. Okay, so it's going to pass down this message to your body, maybe to your hand, to your fingers, to move the door knob untuk membuka pintu rumah, untuk membawa masuk parents ke dalam, right? So, message akan disampaikan melalui neuron apa? Efferent, exactly, Dewa Malaya. So, this is how it is. Sensory is AFF, okay? Interneuron is your deciding, tengah main dengan all the other neurons in your head, okay? And your efferent neuron is your motor neuron. Clear, guys?
Okay, wonderful. All right, <laughs> it's so back behind. I don't know if you guys have those doubts. All right. Okay, so Bowman's capsule. Boleh relate tak dengan faham tak what we are learning right now? Kedah lupa dah sekarang. I takut I go too fast, you guys don't understand. Can ah? Okay, good. So now, we have Bowman's capsule. Don't worry, the slides will be a bit repeating. So you can always understand back. Okay, so blood is going to flow through your afferent uh, arterial. Okay, it's going to release out through your efferent. Can. And in the glomerulus part is when it is diffusing into the capsular space to the proximal convoluted tube. Okay, what is being diffused? Anyone can tell me. Definitely things that you don't want in your blood is going to be diffused, right? So, as you can see here, afferent, pintu masuk, right? Darah tengah masuk. Okay, pergi kepada mana? Okay, that is your proximal convoluted tubule, right? And then, it's going to go to your glomerulus and it's going to be held up in your um, that, that region lah, okay. And then it's going to release out as afferent, A, B, C, right? So, each of these renal tubule is made up of proximal convoluted tubule. That's when it's starting off, right? And then loop of Henley is that region where you have that loop over there, okay? Meaning it is in a loop. Loop meaning dalam uh, bentuk yang bulatan, di mana dia ada berbentuk coil lah. Okay, and then C is distal convoluted tubule. Distal meaning it's mengeluarkan, okay? So distal convoluted tubules of several nephrons ataupun several um, filters, okay? join to a common collecting duct, okay? So you can see here, it goes to the proximal convoluted tubule and then they can masuk kepada the loop of Henle, right? It goes by the loop of Henle and then it goes out to the distal convoluted tubule. All right, so this is how it works. And finally, once the blood has um, collected in the collecting duct, you will have your urine keluarkan, cortex and medulla. Definitely, I can bet 100% you tak faham apa yang cakap sekarang. <laughs> because the gambar raja is like that, right? So let's look at a different picture here. Okay, so here you can see the nephron 1.5 million per kidney, okay? Good, no problem. Sekarang, dalam proximal, um, where is the blood flowing? From your right or your left? Daripada kanan ke kiri? Anyone, any idea? Kiri, okay, interesting. Because you have renal artery, right? No, guys, it's from your left hand side because your renal artery is the one bringing your blood. Renal artery, ingat tak? What is it? Okay, okay, let's look at this gambaja. It's way more um, detailed here, right? So, renal artery brings what? Oxygenated blood into your bloodstream, right? Okay, so it carries out muscle to the glo glomerulus, right? It's a place over there, like a ball structure, circular structure, right? A loop over there. Okay, and then the blood is being flown through the Peritubal capillaries, can, And then the yellow part is the loop of Henle, okay? So you will see the function of loop of Henle, right? And then you have afferent arterial and efferent arterial, okay? So afferent is when it muscle, right? And efferent is when it's going out, right? So the glomerulus capillaries drain into afferent arterioles, okay? Not venules. It's a portal system, that's why I call it. Okay, and then it releases out in the yellow tubing lah, and your blood will be going out through the branch of renal vein. In simple words, garisan merah adalah darah korang. Okay, garisan kuning adalah pundi kencing korang. That's where your toxic wakes are gonna be removed and going to the 
um, urethra. Blood is going to go back to your um, heart again to be pumped back to your whole body system. This must be your clear picture right now. Can you guys get it? I need you guys to understand this concept. Boleh, yeah? Yes, yes. Good, 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 good. Okay, never mind. Those who do not understand yet. Okay. Okay, this drawing is why I showed you guys this. Inside of each of those filter that we call nephrons, this is how it looks like. Okay, so this is how it happens in each filter. In each filter, this is how your blood vessels akan masuk keluar, tapi in the surrounding, okay, your unwanted, okay, unwanted things will be excreted to the yellow region, right? No worries, we have a lot of slides so we will be explaining everything. So kan tadi kita belajar cortex dengan medulla, cortex keluar, medulla ke dalam, you know, right? So cortex the um, dark red part and then the kidneys that we guys saw just now, right? So you can see here, arterial, um, efferent arterial, okay, blood is going in, okay? And then we call it renal capsule where there's glomerulus and Bowman's capsule. Okay, so glomerulus is the part where the blood is, um, it's in a, it's in a tight form form of uh, veins where the remaining, the unwanted things will be excreted towards the Bowman's capsule. Okay, so that will be flowing to the thin ascending limb, right? And then this is what we call as the loop of Henle. Okay, keluar akan goes to the distal connective tubule, pass down, okay, akan disampaikan kepada collecting duct and renal papilla. Okay, um, the thing is, I think you korang belajar dalam bahasa Malaysia dalam sekolah kan? Meaning your nota pun dalam bahasa Malaysia ke macam mana? Hmm. Okay, the thing is, the Malaysia is good, tapi to get references in Basel Malaysia is quite hard. Meaning is to get images from Google in Basel Malaysia is quite hard. Tapi ada lah campur English sikit sikit. So my advice would be to stick with English terms. But fully do you write in Malay, no problem. So this part might be a bit confusing sebab banyak sangat things that you need to draw and then akan ada banyak sangat um, terms or organelles which uh, you have to label and everything is in English. Nanti waktu you nak tulis dekat on your exam, you cannot be confused in which language you nak tulis kan? So you guys need to take a steady hold on deciding on which one because I can only teach in English about um, maksud saya, the terms can be only used in English. I can ajar dui bahasa. Maksudnya saya campur bahasa Malaysia dengan um, BM. Tapi other than that, the terms are in English in every books and every um, reference that I use. So that is why kalau you guys rajin, you need to you know, take a picture of this or then you label sendiri using your Malay terms. Tapi, if not, I would strongly suggest to stick with the English terms and mungkin untuk kefahaman masing-masing boleh belajar dalam bahasa Melayu lah. So, in this chapter, you need to put an extra effort to research um, diagrams in Malay language if you are willing to stick with Malay language. How about the rest? Ramai juga yang cakap bahasa Malaysia. Shira, Abe, P, Nur, Frizana, Daniel, Nukman, Zaif, Daniel, Alia, Aisha. So that's a problem we need to face, guys. So if you guys want to stick with Malay, good, no issues. But you need to draw and label in Malay juga. Meaning you need to use your reference book, your textbook, okay, for that purpose. All right? But your textbook is good. They detail, ada gambar. So you can use that for reference juga. 
So every time I'm telling Glomer Rulers, that in BEM definitely it'll be different, right? Bowman's capsule comes from lying my chum. So for you to relate, you need to keep on translating. How about the rest? Are there young continue in English girls so more about some Malaysia that's wrong? Because it's not much of reference available on the internet or even if I, because I can't be drawing these stuff on your scale. Nanti ambil berjam jam na habis. So I need to use pictures. Amara some English, okay. English, all right. So if that if I'm going too fast in English, uh, let me, eh, I can jump over. <laughs> Tapi in terms of terms, um, sorry guys, I need to stick with English because that's the only thing available. And I think it's fair if we go in English terms. And if you want it in English terms, you need to put in the extra effort to look for the reference. Not only here, anywhere, I think it's the same, right? But no worries, I'll be explaining to you guys in Malay, okay? Tak ada masalah about that. So this is how Beginilah cara badan kita um, filters darah in our body. Okay, so for now, anyone has any question in any parts of this chapter? It's a problem if you don't have any questions. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Adina, is that me too untuk soalan ke? Untuk apa ni? Open mic, yeah sure. So. Buat sikit ya? Sure. Okay, yeah I can dengar. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, Okay, tak dengar. Serius tak dengar. Uh, Hadina, I cannot hear you, Hadina. Tak. tak, sangat. Oh, wait, wait, wait. First time's up, guys. It's 9 o'clock already. No worries. I will teach you guys back on kidneys um, next week as well to recap. So, takut you guys tak faham. But definitely sure. you guys will understand what is urine. Bomeostasis part. Okay, yes, Haradina, what's your question? Um, how the waste product from the, do the waste product from the blood, do they diffuse into the homo gurus? Homo, what is that? Ah. Sir? The question is how the waste product will be diffused to the from blood to the yeah. urine, uh, urine tract, is it? Through the glomerulus yeah. and Bowman's capsule and all. Okay, through ah. diffusion method. Oh, so just simple diffusion. The answer is diffusion method. So yes, when it comes to, can kita the filter, the, um, I showed you guys just now, right? So those filters, right, that is what will be filtering your blood, okay? So they are gonna be absorbing the unwanted things in your blood. So this is what happens in your blood. The nephron. So the nephrons will be filtering your blood. So they are going to, your, your contents in your blood is going to be released out to the urinal tract by the nephron. No worries, there is three stages in the urinification process and all three stages are kind of explained uh, in depth next week. Okay, so those stages are called ultrafiltration, reabsorption, and secretion. So what is ultrafiltration, and what is reabsorption, and what is secretion? In short terms, ultrafiltration is filtering your blood, okay? Kita akan mentafsikan ataupun you are filtering your blood, okay? To mengeluarkan waste products, waste, excess waste, and reabsorption is reabsorption of water. Secretion is mengeluarkan your waste products from your body. So your ultrafiltration berlaku di glomerulus, glomerular capsule dengan tubular reabsorption. Maksudnya, you akan reabsorb air di uh, dalam darah. Okay, and then tubular secretion, akhirnya excretion. So this is when the loop of nephron, the loop of Henle all comes uh, the play. Okay. So isi padu air kencing pada hari panas banyak kan? So, hmm. 
are you suggesting that temperature influences your volume of urine, Chuki? Is that your question? Tekanan osmosis. Okay. Well, it depends actually. Okay. So, isi padu ayah kencing, meaning your volume of urine on a hot sunny day, it's not going to be affected because of the weather, right? Because the weather, it doesn't manipulate that way, but the temperature does. And that is by you drinking a lot of water, right? So, what happens is, when you drink a lot of water, then you will be excreting more water, right? But the osmotic pressure dan tekanan osmosis you bagi tahu kat sekarang ni is depending on the volume of water intake. Contohnya, kalau you minum banyak sangat air, macam tadi saya cakap lah, it needs to balance to have a um, balance of solvent and solute in your body, right? Solute is your sugar or your salt conditions, your salt level. And your solvent is the water, water condition, right? So, so when there is no balance, okay, that's when the osmoregulation happens. So, isi padu air kencing pada hari panas tak semestinya banyak kalau you tak minum air langsung, right? That's why I would not agree with that statement. So, yes, osmotic pressure doesn't depend on the water volume intake. Faham tak? Okay. Anyone, any other questions? We will continue the lesson next week. Bagi sekarang ada apa-apa soalan? To form 4 who just joined? Hi. Oh.